Hey, it's Eugene Bonnie with Board Games. This is a review of Interceptor Ace. Solitaire game from 1943 to 44. You're one man and one fighter plane trying to stop a whole lot of bombers. You are playing as the Germans here. So, in many ways, a successor to the classic and one of my favorite B-17 Queen of the Skies, but completely 180 degrees, you're trying to take the bombers down. So quick lay of the land. This is very much like B-17 going to be a um, chart flipper. You're going to be flipping from chart to chart. I'm going to show you that. Um, the card I'm zoomed in on a little bit here. Let me zoom in a little closer. This is like your role-playing card. You're going to gain experience, gain prestige, gain medals. On this card down at the bottom down here, you're going to track your wingman who is abstracted out but will be flying with you and can jump in and help out as wingman should. And you may also have a gunner if you're um, in an ME-110. Off to the side, you'll see all these different skills, and really that's where the big choices are made. There's a lot of things that will be determined by a random roll or a flip of a card, but the skills you pick with your experience gained and the plane that you choose to fly will have great effect on your career. So speaking of maps, we're going to have the main operation map here, which shows different zones that you'll be flying out of. There's a chart and a die roll that'll uh, pick that for you, but you do have the chance to move around a little bit based on your prestige and where the action is going on. You have a deck right over here. This deck is going to determine all kinds of things as far as what you hit and what rounds hit you. I'm going to slide down and take a look at several um, fighter cards. Now, one thing I didn't do in my unboxing was show you that these are flippable. There's 15 of these double-sided for 30 planes. And you're going to have FW-190s. You're going to have a bunch of BF-109s. See if I can actually get to one. There's just tons of different styles. Okay, another 190. There's a 109 G5. Um, I'm going to go in and explain. Let me come from the non-shaded side. I'm going to explain this abstract area over here, which is going to be you being up in the air and the legs that you have with fuel, range basically, your weapons, your wingman is listed abstractly down here, the damage to your airframe, airplane, or you right here, your ammunition, which will be displayed on a card I have set up over here, and we'll take a look in a second. Let me show you one more plane with an ME or BF-110. And there's a 410 in here as well. And there's the 410. So you've got some options for airframes. What we have here is your tracking sheet. Um, it's going to cover your airframe, the name you give your pilot, very role player-ish, along with your player board. You're going to track your missions, and you're going to start in March 43. Now, there's some randomness that could come from this, um, where you can roll a die and maybe start in a slightly different time. But I'm just going to walk you through. It's March 43. You literally will flip over if you survive that long. And you could be flying to February 44. And then there's extra sheets. So it's a two-sided sheet. Um, we'll be writing in the name of the target. You will be writing in any aircraft that we attack and circling them if we hit them, uh, tracking kills or sorties, and any other kind of notes that are going on in the game. All right, for this game, I had to break out some tongs, and they're even lighted. Hello. <laughs> we won't need that light, but God knows I do. So... For the um, 
some of the little chits, see if we can, I don't know if we can get her to zoom in or not, but we have our current unit. So our flight unit that we're assigned to, the airfield is next, showing where we're flying out of. France is really the predominant thing with our um, color as well. And this is showing we're flying out of France. So that's the current zone we're in. And all those will correspond with that operations map. And more importantly, with our area here, because here is our airplane sitting in the hangar. It's a uh, FW-190A4, as you can see. Um, I'm going to come into this area in a bit. This is a very abstract form of this plane's operational capabilities. I was actually a little confused for a bit when I was playing. And I'll walk through that, and then I'll show you the charts, and then we'll show a little bit of combat. This won't be a super in-depth, but I'm going to walk through the bits here. As much as you're going to be tracking your ammo, what you're really paying attention to here are these bolded numbers of 6, 4, and 2. As long as I have ammunition and these guns are working, this will be the number that I'll be adding to the card, which I'm going to show you in a little bit, which areas. These are the key numbers. Down below here, so over here is my wingman who just sits in an FW-190. He's there to help me out. Damage as I take it. You do not want your fuel tanks getting hit. If they get hit, you could blow up as you would expect. These X's show accumulated damage. So my airframe could take three hits before I would go down. It also tells you there. Along with my tail, my starboard wing, and my port wing. You can also lose your engine. This particular FW-190 has some engine armor. I can take an extra hit. So let's talk about this. So if I was getting ready to take off, I would um, roll on a chart. I'm going to show you all that, but let's just say I rolled and there was a uh, wave of bombers coming in from France. I would move my, if I can pick it up, hello. Let me get that back where it needs to be. That'll drive me crazy. I would also have a target. So if we knew we were going to France, the target for the raid coming in is going to be France. So we've got France in the Ruhr, Frankfurt. We've got Munich. We've got Berlin. I could reach all of these. Bremen, I could not reach, and then there's the landing. Since this is France, I'm just going to set it in this first block. Now, I may add in some photos just to get some tighter pictures here, but you'll also notice there's a little bomb in this spot, the spot I just covered in France. But here you have a 88 anti-aircraft gun. And what these mean is if there's bombs present, and you strike the bomber with some hits, the bombs are still on board. The bombs could be struck, the airplane could blow up. If there's the 88 flat gun, it means the bomber you're attacking is going to already have some damage. It's been over the target, dropped its bombs. You're basically catching it on the way back. As you have a round, you'll literally move on to the spot. You can um, we'll roll dice. You'll make a run on a bomber. Early on, there is no fighter coverage, friendly fighter coverage for the bombers, so there's no little friends. You don't have to worry about that. We'll discuss how that impacts later. And uh, assuming you're still up and running, you haven't taken too many hits, you'll continue to move down this board, basically allowing you to make multiple runs on bomber formations in this sortie. This would be a sortie, you're up, you've got a, uh, a plane full of fuel, you're making your attacks as long as you're able and you're willing to risk the hits that you will be taking to your aircraft and you'll simply keep functioning, maybe even hitting them uh, as they come back. And then at any point in time along this route, you can skip this kind of railroad track deal or maybe you've taken damage and you just go land, and then there's a whole process you'll go through with how much damage did your plane take, are you wounded, uh, what kind of experience did you pick up. The key thing here, however, would be if Bremen had been the random location for the bombing raid, I wouldn't have been able to reach it from my French base, and it would go down as 
just uh, like a day off, a missed sortie. And our mission is to get airborne, find the bomber formations, and shoot down the bombers. That's the mission. We don't want to be having a bunch of sorties that uh, are basically ineffective. All right, you have a lot of charts. So here are four that you're going to basically have in your hand most of the time. They're double-sided. And what I'm going to do is take some photos of these. And as I'm walking through them, I'll probably throw them up on the screen just so they're a little easier to see. So on chart A1, we have our raid chart. This is the bombers that are inbound. We are working off of March 43. We're going to roll two six-sided dice, and we're just going to total them. So I'm going to roll them, and I'll just tell you. So we've got seven. So seven comes in, and you can see it's the, and I'm, pardon my pronunciation, but the Ruin Rail, and it's in France. So what you can see here, the main thing is these blue areas are France, so French bases. The red ones are going to be in the Ruhr, and the um, tan or yellowish ones are going to be in Bremen. Now, Bremen is the one base or the one zone we wouldn't be able to reach with our fighters flying out of France. Since we're flying into France, we would record that on our sheet. So we're airborne, the plane is now aloft, and since it's daylight, it will have no trouble finding the bomber box. And come into our A3 aircraft target chart. Again, March 43. You can see 1 to 7 is a B-17 formation we're going to encounter, and 8 through 10 is B-24. You can already tell with the 10 in there, we're rolling a 10-sided dice this time instead of 6, or there's even a 20. So we got a 6. That means we're going to be going against B-17s. Now I'm going to bring over the B-10 bomber target chart in a second, all right? But before we do, we need to know if we're actually kind of where we're at in airspace when we locate this bomber formation. So we peel over to the B-1 interception chart. You can see it's 2 through 12, so we'll be rolling uh, two six-sided dice. So we got an 8, and we will show a head-on attack to a B-17 bomber. Now, before we head off of this chart, I will show you that um, we will have uh, deck results, which are going to explain some of the cards we'll be flipping. You've got a nice sequence of play that's lined up over here. Sequence of play is also going to be on the operations map, so it's in a couple locations. And down here we have our bomber and group damage. Now here's our bomber target chart. B-24 is over here, B-17 is over here. Everything is very abstracted. This is going to show our approach on the bomber. So first, let's bring the bomber over. So you can see the bomber is situated in a head-on approach. And this shows my fighter at long range. So again, you're not seeing all the, you know, 1 o'clock position or a 12 o'clock position, high, low, medium coming in. There is a board that I will show you before we're gone that I like to use um, better than this chart. But this is a straightforward, basically long, medium, and short range. And I have options to fire or pull out of this attack at any point in time as I approach this particular bomber. So let me show, we are going to be going into the B-17. I pulled the counter down. You can see there's a counter here for B-24 as well. You will see that the uh, port wing root can take X amount of damage, four hits. Uh, if you hit the X, basically in this case, uh, the plane's destroyed. The wing root has come off. So you would have the same for the starboard wing, the airframe itself, which that 17 can take an extra hit over uh, what you've got with the B-24. You've got control services. You've got fuel tanks with the chance of an explosion. And then you've got the pilot, co-pilot, and the crew. You will also see the port engines, both 
inboard outboard and the starboard engine inboard outboard they're radial so they can take two hits before they become inoperable i'm going to walk through um just a one simple round of combat to kind of show you how it works on this particular abstracted card so combat's going to be simultaneous but we're going to draw a card i'm going to draw two cards the first card is going to be the FW-190 firing on the B-17, and then the second one will be the B-17 firing back. So first, we'll just flip here, and you'll see this card has three different levels. We're looking at these attack, the firepower slash hits right now. So again, our plane board, let me just pull it into view. We are looking at this area here, which is six, four and two so you can see we have a total of 12 we're going to fire these cannons and flip these tokens each of these tokens has a two on it so let me get that out of the way we have fired we're firing with all weapons you do not have the choice of firing with just some so you're really opening up with everything and that gives me a total of 12. so on the card if i can get it in shot you will see a 12 is listed right here and it shows GP. All right, let me pull in the uh, chart that shows the B3 bomber and group damage area. Now I've got the card here so I can show you. The GP stands for group damage and I'm going to be resolving under that chart. But let's say I'd been low on ammo or maybe my guns had taken a hit. Had I had just six firepower, I would have had a four four would mean random hits i would minus one off for my range and then i would simply pick am i aiming for the airframe or am i aiming at a wing and then i would roll a 10-sided die in order to establish what is hit so that would have been what had happened if i didn't have group damage but since i had group damage we're working off of this part of the chart i would pick my aiming target so am i looking at a port wing starboard wing or the airframe let's just say airframe and i've gotten a hit that card is said i have hit i've hit a control surface one time the airframe once gunners i've hit uh one time and i've had two random hits but again we're going to uh, minus one of those random hits off because i'm at such long range so let me show how these work so my damage is one to the control surfaces, one to the airframe. With a hit to a gunner, I've got to come over to another chart, which is B4, aircraft damage listing. You will see I've got bomber crew here. I'm going to roll 2d6. So we're going to roll that up. I've gotten an 8, and an 8 would be a gunner. So the pilot could have been wounded or the co-pilot could have been wounded. But we have a gunner. So let me just grab this one over here and show that a gunner has been hit. Now again, this is simultaneous fire, so it's not gonna to apply to this next card that's uh, showing them shooting at me as I fly at them. But in future passes against this bomber, this will come over and this will minus one off of their hits. So it's going to keep me a little safer if I press my attack even closer to this bomber. But right now it's just off to the side and that has displayed, hold on. Oh, and I have one random hit. So you can see we're gonna be working off of the airframe for my random hit. I roll my 10-sided die, I get a 1, which just means there's an additional hit to the airframe. So I'm going to, I don't add multiple tokens, I just move it down. Oh, control services. Boom, I just move it down and it's a march toward total destruction. So what did the bomber do to me? I flipped the other card I drew. Holy moly, their defensive fire, if I can keep it in frame there, sorry, did 5 hits five hits my goodness that's going to hurt me so let me slide this bomber chart out of the way you can see 
as I jumble that around, I've flipped over, so these both show one. I've got several more of these cannon, but I've got one more shot with that one before it's gone. But we're going to assess damage at this point in time. So we come to another chart. So again, if you don't like charts, you probably won't like this game, and you probably did not like B-17. But you can see we're on the B-6 fighter damage chart. We're going to roll two D6. You will see we've got one that is black, one that is white. We're going to call the black the tens, the white the ones. We'll just randomly roll. There's going to be five of these hits. So we got 31, very much like B-17 if you're familiar. And 31 is the starboard engine. Now you'll notice it said starboard engine. Well, it's a fighter with a single engine. Um, that's as if we had the ME-110 there. Uh, anything that says starboard engine, port engine, it's just the engine if you're in a single engine airplane. I do have engine armor, so that will come in and that will protect my engine for at least one round or one hit. I've got a few more hits I can take, but it'll start bleeding off my speed, which will impact my ability to stay aloft and loiter and make multiple hits at this bomber stream. So that's only one hit. I'm going to come in and roll for the next one. And I'm messing up my counters, but I got a 41. And 41 is the radio. So the radio's out. This means I will not be able to call for any assistance from my wingman. Come in and place it. And we roll for yet another hit. See if I can stay off of my ammo. 31. Wow, we're rolling a lot of ones. So you can see that's our starboard engine again, or engine. Not good, not good at all. Now my speed has been bled off one. So my speed for this bomber, I like to throw a little reminder, a little mnemonic up here. Boy, I really knocked everything around. Speed is 20 and it's down one at 19. You'll see how that'll affect me later. That's three hits. Here's four, we got 45. Starboard wing is hit. We come in with, I can get it picked up. Starboard wing, one hit. So you can see I can take three hits in these wings and one more, baby, one more, come on. No fuel tanks, no fuel tanks. 11, what's with the ones? Crew injury. Well, I'm glad you get to see it. We'll see what happens here. So we again come in with the aircraft damage chart, much darker. Now you can see we have crew injury here. And the nice thing about this is that if I, I will roll two six-sided dice, but if I can roll an eight through a 12, that's as if I was in an ME-110 or BF-110. And that would have been my crew member. And then it's no damage. But if I get a two through seven, It'll be me, the pilot, and then I've got to see if it's light wound, serious wound, or killed in action. So we're going to add these up. Come on, eight, eight up. Oh my. We've got a three, so I'm hit. We've got to go in and do a single six-sided die. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So you can see, all right. I would be killed in action. They put one right into me and the fighter goes down. Ouch. Good job for the, uh, the B-17. Um, okay, that's fine. Uh, that's how swiftly death can come. Um, this is great. I've been able to show you how the guns work how the damage is taken, how you're aloft. So if I, you can see as you take damage, you may elect to just get out of here and go back and land. I would come into my sheet, um, basically mark notes what happened in this case. I killed an action, planes marked off, start a new, um, um, start a new sheet or grab a new um, bomber name, pilot name, just scratch it in there since it's flight one and kick on down the road, but you got plenty of sheets. All right, so you've seen how the game works. Um, this is a designer copy that was sent to me from Greg Smith directly. 
I want to say that publicly because I know some people say, well, you won't give it a fair shake. Well, let me start off by saying three negatives, and then it's really going to be positive from there on out. So the negatives. The counters for me are a little bit old school. Um, I wish they were a little bit bigger and had a little bit prettier art on it. That's it. Hard for me to pick these kind of uh, die cut counters up because they kind of concave a little bit. And I had to break out the forceps, the tweezers, but that's fine. No problem. Um, two, tons and tons of charts. No problem. I don't mind charts. Here's my B17 charts. Don't mind them at all. However, I felt like the way they were organized was a little bit scattered. So going back to 1983, you had charts from B17 where the letter corresponds with the color. So the crew compartments, if your crew compartment takes a hit, you're going to be on P1 through 6, and it's, the P means pink, and 1 is going to be the front or the nose of the plane, and then as you walk back through the ship, you're going to go through the pilot compartment, the bomb bay, the radio operating area, the waist, and you're going to be in the tail. And it just walks through on the chart. And it's all on one page, double-sided, from front to back, and it walks you through. And all of them that wear. So the greens, the G1s, G1, 2, 3, and 4 are going to be telling you what missions you're on. And it's going to start you off kind of easy. And orange is the 01 through whatever, and it's got target Bombay stuff. And if your wings get hit, it's on the blue. And I wish there was something a little bit more organized with the charts. I felt like, um, you know, this one's called P something, this one's B, and this one, and, and yet bomber, okay, but then this applies to the fighter as well. And it felt a little bit scattered, and I wish they would have gone, compass being gone with a color-coordinated chart system with the letter corresponding to the chart. But that's me. They work, you get used to them, you figure out where they're at, but I felt like they did it right in 1983, and that could have been something to copy off of. And the final issue, which is not really an issue, but there's three types of dice here. A D20, a D10, and two D6, which are sometimes rolled together and added, summed, summed, added, for 12, 1 through 12, 2 through 12, hello. Sometimes you're doing percentile with those. And then sometimes you're just rolling one and you're looking at the result, or sometimes you're rolling one and you're looking at one, two, three means inboard engine and four, five, six means outboard. And I like to do odd even there instead of thinking the number just odd even. But there's so many, there's so many different dice that I would catch myself grabbing the two 12-sided dice and then seeing on the chart, oh, I was, you know, I'll roll and go, what? And then I'll go, oh, I was supposed to grab the 10-sided and roll the 10-sided here. For me, I, I get that these multiple-sided dice allow the, these different options for Greg, and that's probably good. Um, I just felt like it was a little fiddly. That's it for the negatives. I'm going to tell you right off the bat that Interceptor Ace is the 180-degree B-17 Queen of the Skies. I totally feel like these are on par with the feeling you get, the role-playing that is there, the chart flipping and dice rolling that's present. Um, some things are abstracted out, simply a die roll. However, you do have more choice here with Interceptor Ace because as you survive, if you survive, you're improving your skills as you go. And, but, death comes fast. It's like it's whispering in the slipstream as you're flying by because you're building up your, your, your fighter pilot and bam, you're hit and you're dead. Or bam, the fuel tank just exploded and it's over. Just like B-17. And there's pain involved in that. And that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. And that's what I mean by spiritual successor at 180 degrees. The um, multiple different planes, the 30 different options that are there, the ME410, uh, the BF110, the 109s, the FW1 
uh, 190s and the different gun packages and how all that works is perfect and how you were earning your experience to get different skills that help you do different things. Choose ones that will help you fire first or just stay alive. Just my pro tip. Um, it does no good if you're dead, if you can do all these maneuvers. But um, I, I think that role-playing element with the uniform board that's there and how you're adding in things, how your wingman is abstracted, your gunners, if you have them, are abstracted, is perfect. So one other thing I've seen is how it does it compare to skies above the Reich or what's soon to be storm above the Reich, which is FW-190s and B-24s. This is BF-109s and B-17s. And if I was going to say it simply, so they're both solitaire, but this is one plane, one man, one fighter. This is a Stoffel. This is a squadron and almost feels, well, it's how do you attack a bomber box, which is this, how do you attack a bomber and when do you get out of dodge and say, I've had enough, okay? That's the difference. I believe totally in the same vein, obviously, but totally different. This is way more on how do you hit that box and how do you set yourself up to come back around again? Um, if you have read the book, A Higher Call, love it. So if you don't know Franz Stigler, all right, a pilot um, in World War II for Germany, or Charlie Brown, a B-17 pilot, who on his first mission is so crippled that Hans actually escorts him back over to the channel, that does not happen in later years, um, read A Higher Call. It is the book of this. You get that German perspective. You get his exact insights the first time he attacks a bomber stream in the sheer terror involved. Phenomenal book. Phenomenal game. It captures that terror. Terror. Damn it! Gaming gods.